This is a Stand Up Labs production, powered by digital media. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, oh, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Yeah! <laughs> wow, that's a real armpit, folks. That ain't a mouth or a, or a queef. Yeah, I shaved my armpit just for that gag. Uh, People love it. Just one of them or both? Just one, one, one hairy, one, uh, one queefable. That's all you need. Queefables, that sounds like a good snack for Tuesday's fans. Oh, get yeah. Into business. Yeah, frozen queefables. Pop them in the microwave and they stink. Well, I always liked the, what do you think about the, the, the crackers with the spread cheese, the little red stick? I always enjoyed that. Oh, handy snacks. Sticks. Yes. Yes, that was big when uh, I used to go shopping with my mom and I'd sit in that little front seat like a dick. Oh, yeah. And uh, she would give me the handy snack just to like shut me up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good time shopping. Yeah, shopping was fun. Now, grocery stores in New York are a goddamn nightmare. Oh, uh, you can't get down that aisle. The aisles are so close that when you walk down, both shoulders are knocking over the butter. Right, right. You're losing butter, folks, but you got to butter up your other shoulder when a guy walks by you. Yeah, you got to squinch by sideways and kind of shimmy through. Right, and you can't get a cart. Get out of here with a cart. Oh, there's no, they don't even know what a cart is here. No, no cart or a horse. You put the horse before the cart? Yeah. I see. But then now you forget. You go to a grocery store on the road, and you're like, look at this. I know. It's like a four-lane pleasure cruise. I was in upstate with Wegmans. Everyone Wegmans. Everyone about Wegmans. You're like, Wegmans this, Wegmans oh, that. And you're like, get God. real, you losers. Then you go to a Wegmans. You walk in. You get hit with that air. They got hot cookies. Yes. They got a sandwich shop. Yes. I went eight feet in. I was like, this is the best place I've ever been in my life. It's glorious. They, they pump something in the air in there. It's like the air tastes better. There's like a bird chirping. It's beautiful. It's a hell of a store. So go to upstate New York and hit a Wegmans. It's the best thing in upstate. I'll tell you, Dinosaur Barbecue. We got a good basketball team. Fuck that. The grocery store. That's it. The Niagara Falls can suck my dick and the Finger Lakes can blow me because Wegmans is where it's at. Here, here. Well done, Weg. They're there. Mm-hmm. It's funny that there's a here, here, and a there, there. There's a there, there. There, there is when you're sad. Your dad oh, you're died. Right. You say, hey, they're there. That's because when it's good, you want to go, we're here in the now. When it's bad, you go, go over there. Yes. There, there. Uh-huh. Here, here. Boy, we could have written Seinfeld's whole act. There, there is very odd. Why are they saying there, there? What's the origin? Can we Google that? Yeah. What's the origin? Is it there, T-H-E-I-R? I think it's E-R-E. It's probably E-R-E. Because you get it's there, there. I don't think that's the origin, though. I don't there, think so there. either, but I think it's fun to think of it like here, here means we're here. Let's live it up. And there, there means get it out of here. But I think here, here is H-E-A-R. Ah, you're here, right. Here, here. Right. Hear this. Yeah, now you're right. Hear this. Hear, hear. Which is weird. It's like, yeah, yeah, he, I hear it. I hear it. Stop yelling at me. I don't understand either. Hear, yeah. hear, or there, there. There, there. I might do this as a bit, maybe. I'm going right. to go this way. This Write direction. it down. Hear, hear, there, there. No, I'm not going to do it. I hope you don't. I can't think of a bit. That's the problem. I went, so we got to talk about the wedding today. But it's like a vacation. You step aside. Oh, yeah. It's so hard to get back in. I'm like, I haven't even thought about comedy. I haven't read the news. I haven't written anything. I haven't tweeted. You need that momentum. You lose that momentum, it's hard to get it back. I mean, it's like the gym. You stop going to the gym for a month, the, the first time back to the gym is almost impossible. We talk about it. It's always easier to do nothing than to do something. Completely. Nothing is big. It's a lonely feel. I'm in a weird spot now because it's like this weird... I'm two days removed from the best night of my life, mm -hmm. and it'll probably always be the best night of my life. I hope. It's going to be hard to top, that's for sure. Hard to top, and now it's like you're back to like, I'm just walking alone through the park, and I'm like, I have spots, and you got to like, right, come up with a right. bed. I have a dentist appointment. I'm getting a tooth taken out. It's like this whole thing of like, fuck. Maybe that's why people get married again. You know, you don't always go, why are you doing that again? And you're like, oh, it's a special day. It's a big deal. But I think a lot of the people that get married again, they don't do a big wedding the second time. Uh-huh. That's a good point. But you understand the depression of divorce because there's so much pressure now. Oh, yeah. Because everybody is like, you're going to make it. You guys are the best. This mm. is a man. It feels guilty 
to get to, I'm like, we can't get divorced. Right. Everybody flew in, thousands of dollars, the open bar, her dad gives the speech, the, the whole thing. Yeah, You're like, gifts. God, we got to fucking really make this work now. Right, right. Because yeah. you hate to be like, ah, I'm sorry, it was all bullshit. Yeah. It's a little nerve wracking, but you got to go a day at a time. That's life. There Everybody. it is. You don't want to, it's like a. It's like in baseball when you're down three games to none, mm. and you just got to go. You got to to win today. That's it. You hope to win, and but I got to tell you, there will be hardships, of course. And I know it's easier said, but once you're in, you're gonna be like, "This is fucking hard." But you got to stick together. You got to compromise. You got to make it work. There'll be good ships. There'll be hardships. Here, here, there, there. Right, right. There'll be some here, here's. There'll be some there, there's. Go, go. Alt, right, right. Ooh, fucking losers. Yeah, we covered it. Stick it. Mm-hmm. Stick it to them. Give him hell. Tweet at him. That'll stop it. I got to get into this wedding somehow, some way. I keep coming up with funky-ass shit like yeah. every single day. Well, uh, can I just say this? Say a bunch of things, please. I, I made a huge mistake yesterday. What happened? Well, I had a real epiphany. Ah. Is that the word, or is that a chick I went to high school with? That's a word. All right. Um... I was sitting on the couch, and I realized I'm not working as hard as I used to. I think I got a lady now. I'm gay. I sit around. I got a beautiful apartment. I just like sitting in my apartment. Before, I lived in squalor, and I was single. So I was just all work. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was engulfed, and engulfed of Mexico. And now I got, a, I, got, I got good things in my life. So I'm like, ah, I'll put work to the side because I don't need to swim in it. I want to swim in this happy stuff now. Yes, no work swim. Yes, no work, no swim. You Makes want to fuck uh, dull gay. So I was like, all right, all right. I, I had this opinion. So I was like, all right. And I just started working and I started like typing up pilots and I started like, oh, I want to do James Corden show. So I started making a Corden set and I, I went, out, I walked around my neighborhood and just listened to sets. I had like this crazy guilt and I just got up and did shit. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I felt good. And uh, then this is where I fucked up. So I go online, I started Googling shit. And uh, I found uh, some Reddit pages. Uh-oh. And I put my name into Reddit. Uh-oh. Woo! Don't ever do that. I won't. I never even thought to do that. Don't do it. Don't think to do it. Don't fuck me. Because it is painful. What was happening? Oh, you know, they'll, they'll break down your Fallon set. Oh, Every, everything's negative. You get one guy going, well, I like him. And then they all go, well, fuck you. And then they torch him up. And then I, it's, I looked at Tuesdays. That, that that had mostly nice things, but pretty brutal. One guy goes, the opening, because they, they start with a topic, and then they just chew it down, you know? And uh, one guy goes, I don't know about you guys. Call me gay. I like Mark. I think he's funny. I like his stuff. He's got good stand-up, and I like the pod. And then it was just like, you're gay, gay. We hate you. What are you, crazy? The voice, the face. We hate his act. We hate him. We hate his earlobes. And... Oh, it's tough. And a few things you go, well, he's, that that's correct. Yeah, they got a point on the earlobes, but other than that, I think you're fantastic. Well, it's nice to hear. I'm just saying, don't do it, because there's, there's not much to gain. Well, I mean, I've been afraid of Reddit ever since uh, Louis J. Gome was like, I can't go on, i got to cancel my account. Yeah, I shouldn't have written those things. He but, was out. Uh, yeah, he, I, he's got a point. I mean, Michelangelo didn't have a Reddit. No, no Reddit. He had to paint it. Yes. Oof. All right. He could have an orange it because of the Ninja Turtle. All Michael right. Orange. I told you I'm not funny anymore. I'm married. Nah, you're fine. A lot of funny, hey, you know, a lot of funny married people. Not really. Well, let's see. Jim Gaffigan. Bill Cosby. Yeah. Maybe if I do some side raping, I'll be able to He's funny. keep the flame going. Yeah, maybe the rape keeps you funny. Louis was great when he was married. Yeah. Ray Romano. He did used to be great in Seinfeld. Divorce. Seinfeld's married, but most of his great stuff came single. It's true, but how about it? When Rock was married, he was funnier. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Was he married in 95, 96? I think he was. Okay, okay. But t- uh, maybe not, actually. Shit. All right, well, Who you're, knows? You're, well, Bobby's you're very funny. Kelly. A lot of funny men. DePaulo. DePaulo's been married. He's been killing it the whole time. All right. All right. Geraldo was married for a minute. He was funny. Think twice. Think twice. It's all right. Don't think twice. Mm, uh, anyway, movie. so I guess we got to start. I don't even know where and how to start. It's overwhelming. It's a lot. It's a four, five day event. Yes. Well, much like the fire station episode, this is something we can both talk about. Yeah, we were both well, there. Quite a bit happened before you arrived. Oh, so it's lay a long it on me. lead up. But I want to hear your perspective because I wanted to. I want to know it. It was a fun wedding well, for everybody. I say we just beat this thing out 
chronologically. We'll go chronolodge. Yes, Econo Lodge. Maybe a couple teasers. Ooh. Luis J. Gomez heckled my wedding ceremony. Well, who else would? Put that on Reddit. Uh, but it was expect it was anticipated. But um paint it. Wild, wild time. I don't even know how to start, but so Wednesday more so. Tuesday night was the Meryl Streep night from last Ooh. night. So the night before my wedding thing starts, I'm hanging out with Meryl Streep. Pretty bananas. Why old? So That's lunch. I go to bed, try to go to bed early, wake up first thing in the morning, and I might just start sobbing here because I haven't relived a lot of this. Oh, and, I can't uh, wait. It's just a lot, but I wake up Wednesday morning. I don't know what the hell the clicking is. Uh, I'm, I'm feeling under the table, literally, because I think I heard where it's coming from. Wednesday morning, I wake up, and now Monday, not Monday, we go to the courthouse to get the marriage license. You got to go down to the courthouse. Yeah, this is big. City Hall, which is the marriage. You go down there, and there's like a guy, like a uh, some sort of Haitian guy or something. He's like, he's like, he's got a big camera. He's like, photo witness, photo witness, because some people don't have a wit. You need a witness. I need a witness. Can I get a witness? No. Do you make an appointment? You make an appointment, you fill out online, then you submit that, they give you a confirmation number, mm. you gotta go there, mm. and there's all these people getting married. How about this? I bump into a fan at City Hall wow. on his wedding day. Whoa! He's getting married, he walks up to me, we're waiting to get the license, he walks up and goes, I'm a big fan. That's it's my wild. wedding day, he's in a suit, the whole thing. Wow. I take a photo with him. His family's like, who the hell is this guy? He's like, don't worry about it. He's a great comic. Which How is about quite a that? thrill. Wow. So he tweeted at me later. Congratulations. I hope it lasts a lifetime. Wow. That was something. That was cool. So we wait, and Sarah and I just making fun of everyone. We're like, this guy has no chance. That couple sucks. What kind of outfit is that? Sure. What a loser. Great time down yeah. at the thing. That's love. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Love is hating the same people. Yeah, that's a fucking quote. Yeah, put it on a bumper sticker and uh, give me credit. Yes. So then there's like, speaking of... Uh, Credit karma. Yes. Speaking of hate, Islamophobia. There's an Islamic couple. Mm-hmm. I don't have, I'm not Islamophobic. I'm, uh, I'm a, you know, I love it all. Kind Everyone of, come in and yeah. suck each other's dicks. You're an Islamophile. Yes. Uh-huh. But this woman had a, the full garb, you know, with the slits, like a Jedi lady. Oh, not yeah. Not a Jedi, but the guards, the emperor's guards there. Yeah, she's got the garb. Just the slits. And she's fighting with her guy... And she's going, why don't you shut the fuck up? Shut the fuck up! Which is crazy, because I thought they couldn't... They had to walk behind and wear guards. Yeah. I was like, this baby's bold. What's she doing with an opinion? And then uh, I was like, boy, why don't you come back another day? Maybe this isn't a good day. Yeah, bad don't sleep day. sleep on it. Right. If you're yelling, shut the fuck up. By the way, if my girlfriend or wife said shut the fuck up to me or vice versa, I think it would be over. I'd be like, well, I think we're done. Yeah, she needs to get some shut eye with her slits. Slut, shut the slits, you slut. There you go. Slit. Shut the fuck up. Have your girlfriend ever said shut the fuck up to you? In a, in a public setting, in a yes. courthouse? Shut the fuck up. I'd be like, all right, you know what? What are we doing here? Let's not sign this paperwork. I think I'd poke her little eyes out. Yes. Sarah had a good point. She's like, I wish you could take the thing off. I'm like, can I have permission? I want to show you how angry I am. Because you can't see the face. It's hard to not be able to express the anger. Oh, so she's got to go hard on the fuck up. Because you yes. can't see the emotion. Yes, you can't just give her the eye. Right, it's like Asians. That's why they're so yelly. Because they don't make faces. Yellow. Ah, <laughs> there's something there. That's a great uh, Coldplay song. All right, we hate white supremacists. Yes, the worst. They're gay. Uh, they really are. Anything wrong with gay? Closeted gay, I got a problem with. Okay, because well, hey, come on out. Well, it can be quite difficult. Uh, I think you get you get a high five these days. HIV, <laughs> high five. Yeah, they get high and get AIDS. We ever hear that? The high and then the Roman numeral five is V. Right, I caught it. People used to call that HIV uh, high five. Oh, I never heard of that. And the guy who invented the high five died of AIDS. No. You can Google it. What about the HIV? HIV. Hip, hip, hop, and you don't stop. Rock it to the bang, bang. How about you get hives? I get hives all the time. I know, but you take the E off. Yes, then you got HIVs. Yeah, yeah. Take the E and the S. Right, S. right. Oh, God. All right. Well, we went down a rabbit hole of AIDS. Yeah, that was bad. An we AIDS hole. To... We'll cut it out in post. Anyways, let's get to the love. Mm. So I wake <laughs> up. We get the license. They hand you the thing, and then you got to put it in the bag and hold on to it. You're like, we got a marriage license, which Wait, is wild. what does it look like? It's a sheet. It looks like a certificate. Okay. Like a, what do you call it? A graduation? What do you call it? Diploma. That? Diploma. It looks like a diploma, but for marriage. Mm-hmm. So we go home. Then Wednesday morning, we get up. 
My best pal in the wide world, Derek. He's mentioned often in the show. Best man. The best man. He's my best man in the world. Him and his wife, Erica, they come down first thing in the morning. Sarah's sister comes. We all meet at the house. I get up. I go get a coffee, and I get a cookie, and I'm like, this is my wedding day. I'm going yes. to get married. Going to down to the courthouse to get married. Very exciting. They pull up. They're there right on time. And uh, it's exciting. We all get in there. We wait for Sarah's sister. She shows up. She brings her friend Renee. And now the big six, we're going in. We're going to get married. Wow. Quite a thrill. We get on the train. The worst train day of my life. Really? Yeah, we get on the N train. Holocaust? And it just, just stops, right? At, well, I didn't. I wasn't experienced that. Oh, uh, okay. So we stop in between stops. It's like a 20-minute wait. Isn't that the worst when you have people visiting and a big thing to get to? <laughs> yes. And then Sarah had to get back to work, so she was going to be late for work. She's going to get married and going straight to work. She's very dedicated. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on now. This yes. is a lot. We got, we got Auschwitz. We got relatives. We got a work day. So this is after the courthouse. No, no, this is before we're going to the courthouse. Oh, you're going to the courthouse. You've got to okay. go one now day I to get it. the license. Got then you got to go back to get married. I thought the license was done. Got it. Two Shut trips. Shut the fuck up. So we go. This time we're going. The train takes forever. So I'm like, we got to get off this train because it was a signal problem. we got to get on the 7 train. Mm-hmm. We transfer to the 7. This will be better. So now we transfer. I bring everyone. I'm like, get in the train. We jump on the 7 train. Yes. Then we go to the 4-5 train downtown to City Hall. You're conducting. That train is packed. You can't ah. even get on. It's commute. Ah. So I go, well, let's take the 6. This will be slower. Jesus. But it's less we get on the 6. We jump on the seats. That fills out. Now it's just packed. There's like a crazy guy with his mm-hmm. feet. You know, the homeless feet. Yes, You see yes. a lot of homeless feet here. Hey, there. they're crusty. They're dark and dirty. Feet need a home. They do. You it's need, called a shoe. You need a sock. You need a shoe. A nice fitting shoe. Yes. Flip flop. Eh. This is just a yellow, crusty thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a lump. It's like a like an old tree. A lump sum. Eventually we get down there. You gotta go through security. Different people do different things things differently, you know. That's true. Some people are down there, they got their whole families. There's sixty people. They all go to City Hall together. Well that's a thing. It's fun. And I think a lot of my family was a little upset that we did it on our own sort of thing. Well, well, maybe maybe something for you two, you know? You got yes. the big wedding party. How about this is just for you? Yes, it was for us. And uh, my best pal was there. And his wife was another just one of my best pals. And really a lot of fun. So we go through security. We're wearing, I'm wearing my West Seattle T-shirt and a mm-hmm. pair of jeans that are dirty. There you go. She's got a nice outfit on. But same thing, jeans and a, a top. Cash. Very cash. We sit around. We wait. We're number C-17, and then you get, it's like a deli. Yes. And they go C-16. I'm like, this is us. This is the thing. There's no turning back. Right. We're going to get married. Oh, now what do you pay? A fee? A fee, 25 bucks. Wow. 35 for the license, 25 to get married. So I think 60 altogether. That's cheap. I paid. Oh, nice. He's, so like, he's uh, what do you call it? He sprung. I sprung. A leak. Sure did. Boy, yeah. I was pissing like there's no tomorrow. I was nervous and well, out of service. Sarah likes that. So we go over there. C-17, now serving. We walk over, and there's a sweet dame. I wrote her name down. I can't remember, but she was a, a young black gal and just beautiful and sweet. And they are good because they know it's your wedding. They know it's ah. a big deal. So they're very friendly and very um, catering. It's like going to Planned Parenthood for an abortion. They're really... Nice. They know right. you're in a tough spot, and they're very sweet. So you, you might be there later. we got to keep funding the Planned Parenthood and the city wedding people. That is nice, because everybody in this town is a goddamn cunt. That's exactly you right. You go to the MTA whore in the booth, she's a cunt. You go to the deli guy, he's a cunt. You go to the, the cab driver, he's a cunt. So it's nice that there's one cuntless booth in this town. Great booth. I'm very grateful for our booth. I wrote down her name. I forgot. It doesn't matter. Mm, but uh, I think it's Epiphany. It's on the certificate, which is Oh, nice. okay. Yeah, her name's right in there. So we talk to her. We sit down. We give her IDs, our credit card, and she's sweet. We, we get some paperwork. We sign that. We each sign it. Sarah's got a new name. She's Sarah List. We got wow. witnesses. Derek's one witness. Sarah's sister's the other witness. They sign the paperwork. And I go, great. We're done. We're married. She goes, what? That, that, that. Uh, You're not married. Uh-oh. She goes, you got to stay here. Sit down in front of the chapel. Whoa. There's a chapel. I didn't know that. I thought we were just signing paperwork. Whoa, I don't like this. As an atheist. So it's a whole chapel thing. Well, a chapel's different than a church, I think, or something. I don't know what that is. It's the churchy. Hell. I don't know what chapel means. What about the, uh, the, uh, the, the slit bitch? That was Monday. She's dead somewhere. I, I know, but she, she's she, in Barcelona, she, I think. She, I think she got stoned. But yeah. what about the, the chapel for her? 
Is it a neutral chapel? They call it a chapel. There's no cross or anything. Okay. Just, it's a thing that, if you Google chapel, it might just be a place to get married or something. Oh, man, I think you're right. A okay. lot of these words, you think they mean a thing, but they mean something else. Well, there's a, ah, bit my tongue, shit. Really? There's association. <laughs> association with you the church. Right? Yeah, really, took a chunk out of oh, it there. Oh, jeez, be careful. You like Lecter. Uh, who? Lecter. Hannibal? Lecter, comma, Hannibal. Huh? Well, he ate people. Oh, oh I you see. took a bite out of a body. Ah, jeez. All right, I'm back. So blood, anyway, a lot of blood. We sign the paperwork. We wait for the chapel. We go in, and I didn't know this was going to happen. We go into the thing, and uh, the lady sits at the little podium. She's got the book, and then she reads our names and does the whole power invested in me oh. business. Oh, and Sarah's tearing up. Whoa. So I start tearing up, and we're in this big empty space. And we get married. She goes, I now pronounce you husband and wife, Mr. and Mrs. That? List. How about that? Big old kiss. Her sister uh, took a video of the kiss slow-mo. Sarah posted on her Instagram. What? I got to watch it. I would have liked to have kept it private personally. It was kind of an oh, intimate moment. Oh. But what are you going to do? And, People post uh, everything now. Everything's out there. It's very posty. Yes. Post so we're married. That's it. We're in the city hall. We're married. It's romantic. She's teary. I'm teary. We're all gay. We do a big group hug. We take a moment. They're like, they let you have a moment in the chapel. You oh, can be in here for a minute. That's nice. And uh, we looked around. I tried to really take it all in. And uh, you're like, this is crazy. We're, we didn't bring our rings or anything. No. So it's a weird thing. We're just going, all right, we're married. You're ringless. I call my mother. I say, hey, we're married, baby. And then we went and got a nice lunch, the Nickel and Diner. Ooh. Yeah, it was in Chinatown. We did that. We sat, had a nice meal. Sarah had to go back to work, which is kind of a very alternative couple. Very very cash and very uh, humble. Yes. Well, we got engaged. This is funny. When we got engaged, I told this story in the podcast previously, we got engaged. We both went our separate ways. She went to Brian Regan. I went to Pearl Jam. Wow. So we split up that day. Yeah. And then when we, the day we actually got married, we split up that day also. Well, hey, you live, you learn. It works. You don't want to spend too much time with somebody. Again. Nah, that's a divorce app. That sure is. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. 60%. Is it that high? Ah, something like that. Who knows? High five. So uh, she leaves, and then I got Derek and Erica there. They're, they want to see the city. They're visiting. Mm -hmm. And we're downtown, so I go, let's go down to the World Trade Center. Why the hell not? Nothing bad happens there. So we go down there. You got to see it. It's like this spectacular sight, and I know it's a love day. We just got married, you know, but... You want to see, have you been down to the monument? It's unreal. Thing? They got that big labia, that white thing. Then they got the pool. The footprints. Yes, the footprints, the wall. It's beautiful in there. If you're listening, you got to go. They, they did such a great job. It took, you know, forever to figure it out. But Yeah, about 10 years. But they, it, they, they really did it. And it's huge. There's so much space down there. It's uh, spectacular. It's emotional. And it's just wowzer. Really unbelievable. And then the New World Trade Center, people, some people find off pitting. I think it's spectacular. Oh, it's very lovely, and it's high and pretty, and it's got that, what do you call that thing, a chestane? Uh, spire. spire! Spire! It's inspiring. I aspire to be that nice. It's 1,776 feet tall. Woo! And then, uh... Needs a magnum. Holy hell, hey, are you hiring? You got a business? Maybe we should hire uh, some Tuesdays to help us out. We got a lot of merch out there. Well, I know where to find them. I find them on ZipRecruiter.com. That's where you find your hires, folks. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. Right now, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free, Mark. Wow, free! That's right, free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. Yes, you got that right. Uh, find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. So you got that right, folks. ZipRecruiter. For free, that's right, free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. Yeah, it's different. ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike any other job site, ZipRecruiter does not depend on candidates finding you. It finds them. Whoa, they find you. Ah, I hate myself. ZipRecruiter.com slash Tuesday. Get in on it now, folks. Thank you. Is it still recording? Yes. So we sat there. Now, uh, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. My Derek and Eric, they have a new baby named mm. Joe. 
After oh, me. my God. Quite an honor. They had it when we were in Montreal last year. All I together. remember that. Instead I remember. Crying, I had to go in the bathroom and sob like a fruit. Is that two kids for them? Two kids. Okay. Good amount. Perfect amount. Anyways, so then we uh, she starts percolating. She's breastfeeding, but she's not with the baby. Is that right? So these breastfeeding people... That milk starts to fucking burst out. You gotta Whoa. get it out. Well, that's like a Capri Sun. Yeah, you, once you have it in there, it's it's a thing. Right. So she's gotta go down. She's like, I need a, I need a. She got a. They got a tube and a device that sucks it out and puts it in a cup. Whoa. Did Normally, you taste it? Normally, you just grab the baby and yeah, hook it up, and then the baby drinks fresh from the tap. Where's the baby? The baby's back home. Oh, or they... at the hotel. Oh, the hotel. Because he's. I'm not gonna bring him for my wedding. Get out of here, kid. Yeah. Well, who's watching the kid? His mother. Wait a minute. Derek's mother. Oh, they brought mom out. Mom came down. Big shout out to C-Dubs. We yeah, love you. Yeah, MILF. So, <laughs> Gilf. Oh, that's right. Good for her. Well, she's a Gil. Mom I love. Grandma I love. Whatever. Yeah, I got it. Oh, boy. This episode's very stop and starty. I feel bad. I feel like we're not hitting it good. It's a, uh, it's a love. Do I stink? Am I, uh, no, worst? no, we're doing great. Is it all right? Well, we got good love, and we got uh, some puns in there. All right, I'm very nervous that it stinks. I feel like I stink now. I'm married. I'm I a think, loser. I think it's great. Wait, this, people, the public wants to hear this. It's gold. All right, all right. They want to hear it. We teased it a whole it. week and a half. Yeah, good point. All right, don't turn on the slit, lady. Don't worry, we had anal on wedding night. Aha! Uh-huh. Don't feed them lies just to satisfy them. No anal on wedding night. All right, keep it real. You're doing great, goddammit. Look uh, at that ring. Hell of a ring. You're a man! That's the ring sound. <laughs> Knock on wood. Game of Thrones. <laughs> I meant to say ring of... What's the one? Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Uh, they both stink. <laughs> Get real, you idiots. There's <laughs> real life happening out here. Anything with a dragon sucks. Blow me. Uh, it really does. Maybe Puff the Magic Dragon if you're a kid. I'll let you slide with Puff. Puff Daddy sucks, too. I don't get him. But What's up with all the names? P. Diddy? P. <laughs> you're, you're a dork. Grow the Sh- hell up. Sean Combs. Puffy Combs. Yeah. Puff Daddy. P. P. Diddy. Diddy. We get it. Come you're on fucking, with that. You're a twerp. And why are you in the video? How come you're dancing back there? I... Piggy's great. You discovered him. That's nice of you. Yes. But why do you got to dance? That's your skill. You, you got an eye. Move it along. It's so crazy. You know what I mean? I don't know. He banged J-Lo. That's something. I mean, Nick DiPaolo, he saw talent in me. When, not, when I'm performing, he's not back there behind me doing the jig. <laughs> Get out of the video! I mean, that would be cute, but yeah, yeah. Get out of here, all of you. You're all silly. All up in the videos. Snoop Lion. What is that? Grow up. Come on. Prince is, get, a, is a symbol now. You get one name and that's it. Yeah. You're going to stick with it. What, what is it? Ah, so stupid. Boom Boom and Bruce Bruce, all this shit. And Lil. I used to work at a record store. It was all Lil and Big. It was like 70 sections. There's Lil Big, Young, Jeezy, Young Wheezy. Who cares? Lil Wayne. Come on. Young's another one. But the Lil and the Big. See, you go to a record store, you go to the L's and the B's, it's just 75 artists. Well, Whitey steals a lot from black culture, but we never took the Lil and the Young and the Wheezies. Well, there's Big J. Okerson. Ah. There's a couple yeah. Bigs, a couple Lil's. Yeah, he is big at least. But Lil's we didn't really take. Nah, Lil's too much. L-I-L, get out of here. Yeah, it's a little silly. All right. Anyway, so then she's percolating. She needs a, 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 a breast pump. Oh, wow. So she's like, I need an outlet and some privacy stat. And I said, I know where to go. I'm at the World Trade Center. Where do you go? You're at the World Trade Center. You need some privacy and outlet. Where do you got to go? Starbucks? The Comedy Cellar. Ah, I, right. I call up Liz, the old manager. at Not the old manager. Ol, O-L. See, we use Ol. But Ol is Ol English. That's true, but Lil is, you know, whatever. It's like a ye old in. That was ironic, though. I'm trashing Lil, and then I use Ol. Ol's so maybe all I'm right. just as bad. Ol's all right. All right. Well, I, I call old manager Liz, and she says, I don't see why we couldn't do that. Come on by. I say, I got just the spot. Now I feel like a hero. Yes. She's like, I need an out. And there's an app for these ladies. You can look where the nearest, nearest outlet is. I feel like as the husband, Derek, I get down there, I start sucking. Well, what's he going to do? Like, spit it into a bottle? Spit and rinse. But I think the, the percolator thing does something. It, it, oh. oh, it does a thing. Because it makes a noise. you got to plug it in. It's like a thing. Oh, it holds on to the juice. It's like a... 
I don't know how it worked. I didn't look. She, I asked. Uh, she I wouldn't take any money from me. Yeah, I got so many questions. So anyways, we go to the car. I go, I, I got the spot. I took care of it. I feel like a real man. Yes. I'm like, we got to get in this train. We jump on the E. We take it to West 4th. We go to the cellar. And I go, I got a lady here with the, with the tit that's about to leak. Step on it. They go, go downstairs. Oh, wow. So we go down into the showroom. How about that? The greatest comedy club in the world. This is the first time ever there's a woman breastfeeding in the club, as far as I can tell. I love it. It's, it's our hub. It's our home. It's home base. It's home base. You go there. and uh, It's home tit. She plugs in. And then I email Louie. CK, he can't come to the wedding, but I say, hey, if you're interested, I just got married, and we're getting, because I saw him the night before, I said, I'm getting married in the morning, I told Meryl Streep, I said, I'm going to get married, she said, that's lovely, great, they clapped, they were really nice, mm -hmm. so I say, hey, I'm over at the cellar, he sent me a nice email saying, marriage is great, thanks for coming over last night, it was really sweet, oh my god, and I wrote, well, if you're interested, uh, I'm having dessert over here at the cellar, and I just kind of threw it out there, and then uh, I go upstairs, I see Liz, and she comes out. She's like, oh, my God, you're married, which is exciting. And yeah. I was like, Sarah went to work. She's like, that's weird. And I was like, well, whatever. I love the irony, too, of being in this room that's full of people every single night of the year, and this is the, this is the most hidden place you know. Yes. You know what I mean? Because it is, because it's the daytime. Daytime, it's quiet. But in a few hours, it'll be jammed. But then the waiter walks down, and he doesn't realize. He walks right in. Her titty is out! Wow. And he's like, hey, do you want strawberries with your ice cream? And she's like, sure. And this thing's like... Wow. And pulling milk. It's a loose, loose tit. Ironically, she's ordering ice cream while getting milk. That's a lot of dairy. Dairy. Or dairy air. <laughs> That's out next. So then he had to keep waiting on us, which is very awkward because he just saw her big uh, cash and prizes. They should have sent the lady down. I think they didn't know what was happening or something. Maybe he was mm. going to the back. I don't know. But anyways... Liz comes out with these two giant ice cream. They really take care of you. They over really, there. they they go over and out. We're celebrating. I got a big old giant ice cream, and then I look up, talking to Liz. I look up. Who do I see jogging down the street to oh, pay a visit? Oh my God! It's I don't old believe it. Louis C.K. Oh, uh, Lil Louis. L.C.K. Wow. Big Louis. Big Lou. He comes down, and he he was he was out working somewhere, and he he saw the email and jogged all the way down just to. Pay his respects and say wow. hello. Wow! And what a thrill! What a sweet moment! I went. I can't believe he came. It was like a, it was like a teary eyed moment. I can't believe he came either. That's so precious. Quite an effort. He came all the way down. Meanwhile, I'm talking about what an effort he made. Derek and Erica traveled from Seattle and took two weeks off from work. And I'm like, he came ten blocks to see me. Yeah, well, that's a tall order from that guy. It was quite a sweet moment. And then they're shooting, crashing down there. Greg Fitzsimmons walks by. He's working. He's in makeup. He's acting. He comes back. He goes, what are you doing here? And then Louie goes, I came to see him, which is quite, it felt good. That's pretty damn cool. And then Derek walks out, and it's, he's a huge comedy nerd. He listens oh, to all the podcasts. He listens this to Fitzsimmons. Bananas. He just sees Louie and Fitzsimmons. He's like, this is insane. He got to wow. meet Louie, which was nice. Wow, that's lunch. And Louie shoved off. We ate our giant ice creams. I wanted an empty stomach because I was nervous and gay. Uh -huh. and two-thirds. Well, what did he say hello and he left? He hung out for about five, ten minutes. We talked about the movie, the whole thing. And then uh, he leaves. But that was, it was sweet because it felt like he's like, I'm not coming to the wedding, but I'll, the wedding day I saw him. Yes. So the actual wedding uh, day. So we have a nice night in New York, a nice day. Then we get home. We meet up with uh, Sarah. We all get in the van. Now, this is like a big moment. It's emotional. We grab the suit. And, uh, and the, the dress and the mm. shoes, and we pack it all up. We're like, don't forget this. You got to remember that. Get those rings. Got to get the rings. Had to remember the rings. That was big. You're Lord then, of the Ring. Then we get, then we get in the rental van, and we all drive up. And now it's like this crazy thing. We're like, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe it's here because you're planning it for really for years and for weeks. And then as a girl, you dream about it. As a guy, I'm gonna admit it. I dream about it too. Yes. And now we're it's here. And for so, time is so fascinating because for so long, it's in the calendar. It's ahead of you. You're like, we're heading towards this event. Right. And then now, all of a sudden, it's here. It's happening. So crazy. And now, as we're recording, it's now in the past. You yes. can't slow down time. It just keeps moving. Just keeps moving, which is the great thing and the curse of life. It's fascinating. It's in front of you. Then it's there. Mm -hmm. And then it's gone. That's here, it. here, there, there. There, there. Yes. Mon père. So we get up there, and then we pull in that parking lot, and it's like you're overcome with emotion. You're like, I can't believe this is happening. It's here because we've visited a couple times. You had to set everything up. You got to meet with the director and the business and the thing, and you can make all these choices. And now here we are. We're there. Now, what? give me a time and a day again. This is Wednesday night, probably around 
Quarter of nine, we oh, get up there at nine late. o'clock. Yes, yeah, so, well, we had to wait. We went out for dinner, the whole thing. Okay. So now we get up there, and uh, Sarah, the only people in the, the hotel are Sarah's parents, my parents, and then Derek's mother. So it's all the parents of all the special people the first night. All right. So we get there, and then uh, we go to visit Sarah's parents. Like, we, they're, we're like, we're going to bed, but come by and say hello. So we go in there. Her dad's adorable. He's in his PJs, mm-hmm. and her mother's in her PJs. She's already in bed. She's, like, sitting up in bed. They're watching TV. It's like they Willy go, Wonka, the they, old parents yes. can't get out of bed. They, they go, come on in. So we sit down, and you can see the excitement on their face. They're ah, so happy. Good for them. Which feels good. You want the approval, you know? Yes. And you can see they're like, this is a beautiful part of the world. This is so exciting. Because they're world travelers, you know? Ah. Like, this is beautiful. So that they, they feel like they approve. They right. like the hotel. And they're, ha- they're excited. And I can I say uh, you, you, know, you shouldn't say it, so I'll take the, the reins. Her dad's old. I mean, this guy's on death's door here. <laughs> he's he's, he's got to be eighty eight. No, he's uh, seventy four. I think seventy five. All right. He looks like the guy who who narrates Planet Earth. Oh yes, Attenborough. I don't know what the guy looks like, but I assume he looks like Sarah's dad. Well, his brother is David Attenborough. No, Richard Attenborough is the actor. Yeah, From Jurassic Park. Right, yeah, right. The Jurassic Park guy. So he's that in guy that world. Like yeah, guy. he's got a little uh, little Anthony Hopkins and a touch of uh, Connery. Well, he's got a big South African accent. Oh, yeah. And he's a very wise, older, strong man. He's a big guy. He was big in the guy. Army, the whole thing. So mm-hmm. he's very uh, intimidating, for yes, sure. Yes, yes. But you could you could push him over with a, with a nice breath. But still, Timmy, you still, it's not physical. It's that emotion. You want this approval of this mm-hmm. man. Big man. A real man. Oh, there's a picture of David Attenborough. Yeah, oh, he looks yeah. kind of like that. Yeah, something like that. Not bad. I'll pull. I, I pulled that off the voice alone, by the way. Similar accents, yeah. All right. So, so anyways, we bed. see them. Then we go back. So they're going to bed, which is nice, because you get like 20 minutes with them while sitting in bed with them, which uh-huh. is a little odd. Then we go back to our room, invite my parents up to my room. We order pizzas, me and Derek and uh, uh, my parents and Sarah. We order a bunch of pizzas. Then we listen to the Red Sox game on the radio. Wow. Ooh. While eating pizzas and talking about the wedding, the Red Sox win their last at bat on the radio. They're like, there's a long drive. They're going to score the Red Sox. And so it's wow. like this crazy. Everything's locking in. Yes. So they go. So that's like night one. They leave. Then Thursday, now we got nothing to do. We're just hanging. Derek and I are throwing the old ball around mm-hmm. in the courtyard. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my family starts arriving on Thursday. So we're all sitting out in the courtyard. My uncles, my aunts, everyone's drinking beers, telling stories. Sarah comes through with her parents. Now, Friday, after, no, Thursday night, we have a big dinner where the parents meet each other. Oh, so everyone's boy. like a little bit anxious. It's like the... They've never met? Never met. Oh, they're boy. in Texas. They're in Boston. They probably would never meet again, most likely. Interesting. So uh, they're like, this is like this big dinner. They're going to meet. But like three in the afternoon, her parents just happened to walk by. I said, well, come meet my family. Yeah. How about it? Introduced her to my parents. My uncles. I thought they were going to say hello. They end up sitting down for three hours. We all hung out. Is that right? And everybody got along. We're telling oh. stories. We're telling stories. The beers are cracked. We're ordering drinks. We order apps. I love it. Her brother and sister show up. Everybody's there. The clans are uniting. Yes, big clan meeting. Unite the clans. Oh, wow. South Africa and Whitman Mass. Coming together. The chocolate chip cookie and the apartheid are all in one place. <laughs> a couple of Mandelas. So we're uh, all chatting and hanging, and now it's time for dinner. Now, the dinner, all the pressure's gone because we've been hanging out all day. There you go. So we go to dinner. It's it's Derek, the best man. Sarah's sister was supposed to be there, but it was a miscommunication. She ended up being, uh, couldn't come until the next day. Awkward. So it's Sarah's parents, my parents, Derek, and Sarah. Big dinner. And then, like, I jump in the car with Sarah. I'm like, we'll follow you. And at one point, I think my her dad forgot he was following my dad. He's like, this guy's going so slow up here. Mm. And I was like, that's my dad. Oh, weird. Then my dad put the blinker on. We got to turn. He's like, why do you put your blinker on if you don't turn? I'm like, ah, he's probably drunk. All right. Easy, self F. Yeah. <laughs> So, wait a minute. Where'd you eat dinner? A little nerve wracking. We went to the Bridgeview Tavern in Tarrytown. Beautiful view, beautiful sunset. Dinner goes great. Everyone, me and her mother, ordered fish and chips, and so did her dad. I ordered the same thing as her parents. That felt good. That's good I'm stuff. Like, ah, look at it. We're the same. Bonding. My parents drank 8,000 beers. They had a couple cocktails. Great dinner. We go back to the courtyard where we were sitting. Now all the families are back together again. Yes. I'm smoking a cigar. Derek's trying to smoke a cigar. He's gay. And it, we're all we're, we're all sitting in one big circle. Uh-huh. 
Outside. Okay. Well, I thought Friends were coming up on Thursday. Oh, that's Friday. Friday. All right. Sorry. Day. I'm jumping the jizz. So we're sitting there, and I had a moment at the end of the night. I was like, that's the last time this week where the, all the people will be in one circle telling stories. Yes. Because people keep coming. More people come. I love it. So then Friday, I get up early. Derek and I go hiking. Blue Mountain State Park. Beautiful hike. Highly wow. recommend. About a half hour drive. And this is sort of like the bachelor party last yes. thing here. The bulls. The two bulls. We go up. We get coffee in the morning. We hike. And just a great life talk. Mm-hmm. You know, you get in there. It's I'm getting We talk about marriage. We talk about life. We talk about the environment. We talk about politics. Wow. It's just beautiful. And you start having these moments of you're like, this is a real Friendship, what a blessing to be with this person. You, you feel, you, you tune into your feeling of like, this is pure joy and happiness yes. being with this person that I've known for 20 years. And it's just, a, it's amazing. And there's so much water under the bridge and stories. And you come so far. And now I'm getting married and we're chatting about it. And wow. Beautiful hike, spectacular. We come back, we stop, we get sandwiches at Lucy's in Ossining, New York. Ooh, big plug. Get a chicken parm sandwich. It's great. We come back. Right when I get back, he's like, I gotta go see my wife. My sister knocks on my door. I say, come on over. I got a suite. My sister and the kids come over. We eat a big sandwich, and we're bullshit. I get to put some time in with the sis. Nice. Throwing around old memories. And how, how are you guys getting along? You guys tight, or is it kind of... We're tight. We're oh, tight. We're boy. tighter than we've ever been. I'm it's jealous. beautiful. And uh, we have, I eat a big sandwich. I say, hey, let's go outside. We got to go outside. So we bring out the, the old cornhole boards. Ah, oh, game changer. And now here comes Uncle Dale, and here comes Derek, and we're throwing the cornhole. We're drinking the beers. We're throwing the baseball around. And all of a sudden, who comes in? My parents, Cantor, and Ari Shafir. Hey! He brings his glove. Immediately, I start throwing the ball around. At one point, I was playing cornhole with basketball shorts, no shirt, and smoking a cigar. And then Sarah's whole family came out. I jumped into the bushes. like I was like, ah! Yeah, you don't want the, the, the white trash coming out too you early. You don't want them to know what a piece of garbage you are. So I had to put out the cigar, throw a T-shirt on. Yeah. I come back out of the bushes. Ari shows up. He brings his glove. So now me, Derek, and Ari are throwing the ball. Woo! It's like a Springsteen song. Wow. And it's hot. And there's these weeping willow trees. It's a spectacular wow. venue. Wow. Yeah. These old weeping willow trees. And everyone's sitting in the gazebo. And the uh-huh. two clans are hanging. And oh, yeah. We're the throwing Jew. the ball around. And it's that like, was great. It was fun because it was an Orthodox Jew wedding happening over there. Yes. They were all hanging. And then Ari walks up and goes, I don't know which group to walk to. Ah, uh, that's cute. That was fun. That got a big laugh. He's like a Sandy Koufax. He really mended the fences. So Yes. We're throwing the ball around. That's beautiful. And now Friday is the big rehearsal dinner. We didn't do any rehearsal, but it's the big pizza party my mother put on. More pizza. She rented a spit, lot of pizza. We're real animals with the pizza. <laughs> you love a pizza. So she puts together this big... Uh, thing at a church upstairs in a church in the attic of the Whoa. church space, not at the attic, but it's like a big function space. Uh-huh. She gets all these pizzas, they set it up, and now every all these comics start arriving. The Boston Boys, oh Bulger, boy, Alvin, Big Al, and uh, Tom Dustin, mm-hmm. and then Mike McRae from Houston, he gets mm. there, and now Henry Phillips shows up, wow. and then Ari is there, and then Canner is there, and everyone's coming and hanging. It Bobby Kelly shows up. He brings his son, who's the most adorable kid in the world. Cute kid. He wanted to meet the parents because he's officiating the wedding. That's right. And that was a hot night, and everyone's that's the night everyone gets real liquored up. Oh, everyone's is that smoking right? weed. My uncle Greg is drunk, and my uncle Dale is drunk, and my cousins are drunk, and everyone's spinning some yarns and yes. having some hoo hoos and some ha ha's. And you don't mind as a sober guy, you don't mind a couple of people popping some back. It's better. You want them to be drunk because oh then Paul Odo was there. A lot of comics were there and yeah. uh you want him to be drunk because it, it makes everyone happy. He's more functional. Totally, you know? totally. Everyone's chatting. Oh, Mike Whitman, Jimmy Whitman, all those Boston guys. Uh, there. I love the Whitmans. Great guys. And then uh, we do the big pizza party. That was great and fun and sweet. And everyone's, it's, it's fun to put all these groups together. Did you ever meet? This is my dad. This is Henry. You know, right. This is my uncle. I'm gay. The whole thing. Sure. Really fun. World's colliding. And then we went back to the hotel. I did a shuttle. I was running the shuttles and stuff. That was oh, fun. Because wow. I'm a sober guy. I got a. Derek had a van that he rented, so I was running back and forth, putting everyone back at the house. 
And that night we hung out at the hotel bar, and everyone was licking up that night. We were telling some old stories. It was great. Wow, this is lovely. Oh, Chris Walsh was there, too. Oh, yeah, I love Sabina. the Walsh. So at one point we had all these great storytellers. It was like Ari, Chris, Henry, Tom Dustin, myself, all sitting in a circle just whipping out stories. Wow. Was like, oh, I'm, oh, sure this one. I'm sorry I missed that. It was like a campfire minus the fire. Yes. Great night. Eventually, then you get to a point where everyone's too drunk. We're like, all right, it's time to go to bed. we got to mm-hmm. go make love, the whole mm-hmm. thing. Oh, yeah. And then uh, Saturday comes around, and uh, that's the big day, the big wedding day. That's it. You wake up, and you look out, and they're setting up the chairs. It's surreal. Whoa. I look out the courtyard, and there's a bunch of guys wearing all black. It's 100 degrees. They're stacking chairs. Uh-huh. And you go, boy, there's no turning back now. This is it. This is it, baby. And now I'm getting hit with a little bit of anxiety. Not about getting married, but about all these people in one place. You know? Right, right. It's a, it's a wild time. and uh... You have no cold feet. There's no, uh, ooh, this is it. You know, marriage, commitment. No, that time had already passed. That's in the decision-making time and right. the proposal and all that stuff. And you That's work good. out in therapy and all that right, shit. Right, right. I mean, it's a big commitment. It's not, well, to me, marriage, it's all really... This spiritual commitment, because the rest is just signing paperwork, right, right, and a party. It's a real one-on-one thing. Yes, which really hits home yesterday when I get home, because you have the day before. There's 120 people there. They're all there to party, and yeah. everyone's saying nice things and dancing and being great. And then, like 12 hours later, it's just her and I sitting on the couch. Just going, all right, everyone's gone. It's just you and me now. Yeah, it's very bizarre. Very it's- smart though to to have these multiple nights so you can ease in imagine all this shit happening in one day at the, and it's the wedding day and you're getting married and the officiating and all your family and friends and meeting that's a lot well it allows you to be in it for longer yeah see everybody right spend some time get in there i got to hang with my sister i got mm-hmm. to hang with my folks a little bit i got to hang with her folks right and she saw her old friends and it was really fucking special uh, indescribable unbelievable so saturday that day I'm a little anxious. I haven't been eating too much, and you're just like, oh, my God, this person's coming. And then people start texting you, and everyone's like, what yeah. are you up to? Where are you coming? Where are you? Right. And uh, so it's a lot. You're like, oh, my God. Everybody's like, what are we doing today? Because the wedding's not until 5.30. Yes. So I called Derek, great best man. I go, I got to get out of here. I got to go do something. I got to go get food. So we get up early. We go down to the cemetery. Mm-hmm. Here's a fun story. We go down to Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. The day after... The day after I got actual married in the courthouse, we went to 9-11 Memorial. The day before I got marry the ceremony we go to the cemetery Uh uh-huh so a lot of a lot of death there's a lot of life and death stuff new beginnings and endings here here there there so we're walking around the sleepy hollow cemetery which i highly recommend it's beautiful there's an old rock wall down by the brook a little river Mm -hmm. we we gotta go down there so we're walking through spider webs i'm like i think no one's been here for a long time because with the spider webs yes we walk out to the end of this old broken bridge looking thing and we're like mm-hmm. i hope this holds us we're kind of bouncing up and down both derek and i he's a big guy yeah yeah big tits we stand there we take some pictures some videos we walk back up and uh the uh, groundskeeper pulls up he goes hey what are you boys doing here oh boy i say hey i'm getting married and we're gay we're walking around we're looking at stuff he goes all right all right congratulations whatever you do don't set one foot on the old dam. Mm. And we go, the old dam? He goes, yeah, that thing right there. It's condemned. They're taking it down any day. Mm-hmm. Couldn't be more dangerous. Uh-huh. We said 10-4. It's like a Hardy Boys book. We were both just standing on it, bouncing on the goddamn thing. Oh, my God. I almost God. died my wedding. Wow, how about that? We're jumping up and down. We weigh 600 pounds combined. Yes. I weigh 160. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. You're not dead. Alive, baby. They could have used the sign, by the way. But it was like an old, yeah, like he said, it felt like an old, you know, novel. He's like, the old dam is condemned. Right. Like, oh, shit, all right. He probably thought we were fucking in the woods, to be honest with you. I'm sure. You we, got that face. We thought about it. Yeah. Well, also, I spilled uh, cream pie all over my eyebrows, so. Ah, uh-huh, a little money shot. So anyways, we went back, and then later, I'm starving. I'm like, Derek, let's get some food. I'm still anxious. So we get in the car. We're driving out. Who do we see? Smoking a cigarette. It's old Tom Dustin. I go, hey, what are you doing? He goes, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm putting this cigarette up and getting in the car with you. I said, jump in, saddle How about up, partner. That? He puts out his cigarette. We go back to Lucy's. This is where the obsessive compulsive situation. I go, that was a good sandwich, <laughs> good meal. We're going back there. Yes. We drive down there. We get Powerball tickets. We get scratch tickets. We're being goofs. We're laughing it up. We're yucking. We're telling stories. We're punching each other in the belly. I feel better now. I get my chicken parm. It's time to go back. I drive back. 
Ari texts me. He goes, hey, we're down at the cemetery. I go, we're driving by. We'll stop in. I pull into the cemetery. It's Chris Walsh. It's Sabina. It's Ari. He's shirtless. Sun's out, guns out. Yeah. We find them. We get out of the car. We joke around. We goof. Everybody's smoking. Tom goes, I got a cigarette. I'm going to stay with them. Tom's a free floating dead. Uh, I love a free floating Tom. I say, all right, we'll see you later. We drive back. We go out into the courthouse. Now everybody's arriving. I bump into you. Oh, with yeah. With your girl. She's got the boobs. Yes. Nate shows up. Here comes Nate. Here comes Vecchio. Oh, yeah. Soder. Tony Deo. Carrie Ann Deo. Soder. They're out there. Who else? Bobby Kelly shows up. Mateo. Veter. Sam. Beth. Hanley. Ashley. Brooke Roberts. Everybody's there now. We're playing cornhole. We're drinking beers. I'm smoking a cigar before the wedding. I don't yes. give a shit. I know it's going to get great. I'm already celebrating. Oh, yeah. Everybody shows up. My grandmother shows up unannounced. That was a whole scene, but it's fine. Really? Oh, it was a crazy scene. What's that? What, you hate her? Well, it's a whole thing. She fights with the kids. Bobbity boop. Oh. Up. She never responded. We thought she wasn't coming. She sure was up surprised. Wow. So, very odd. Now everybody's there. All the comics are together now. Yes. It's everybody's hanging. We're My hanging. family's mixing with the comics. The comics are mixing with family. Oh, People yeah. are making out. That Dale's a fun guy. Oh, Uncle Dale. He's the funnest. Yeah, good egg. Uh, I wore a suit in the middle of the goddamn heat, and it was a great time. And uh, I got to tell you. Please. This is, the, this is the hard thing for comedians with a wedding. Is uh, You know, as a comic or as a guy, you're the star of your movie. So you have to at some point go, all right, there's Joe. This is his movie. And I'm in it right now. My life is my movie. But right now, we're all in his movie. The movies are mixing. The movies are mixing, but you got to give up your movie for your day. I see. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You know, it's like if a guy's doing a special, you go, "All right, I'm, I'm, in, my, this is my movie, but we're we're at his special, so we're gonna give it to him." Yes. You know? And uh, I forget, and I, I'm such an insecure fuck that I see you and I go, "Hey, Joe, it's your day," and I and, and I want a PC. I'm like, "Hey, we're close," but I realize you're busy. You got a million people to see. Well, I'm seeing I, you, people. Yeah, but I have to. I have to remind myself, like, hey, hey, he's got things to do. He can't just hobnob with you all day. Well, I like to hobnob. I try to hobnob with everybody. That which I appreciate. It was hard trying to put a lot of time in, but you go. I got a few minutes with them. I got a few minutes with them. And you're moving around. It's right, crazy. Right. And uh, and then now it's getting time. Now it's like four thirty. Oh yeah. So like, we got to disperse. We got to clean this up because we're playing in the wedding area. Right. So we all disperse. I go back to my room to shower, which is a weird moment because the the bride, she's got her whole, she has her own room. They give her the sleeping hall. Oh, is that room. right? Yeah. So she's down there with her mother and her sisters and her people. And now I'm getting married in 35 minutes. I'm just alone, naked, showering in my room. You're like, this is weird. Mm. This is a weird calm before the storm. Mm-hmm. I sit down naked. I do a little meditation. I sit there. I have a moment. Then I put my clothes on. My dad ties my tie. Ooh, traditional. You know, I had my, I bumped to my sister. I'm like, you got to run. I had the wrong ring. I had my own ring. Sarah had her own ring. Mm-hmm. I grab my sis. I go, you got to run down there and trade out rings. She goes, you got it. So she runs. She comes back with the ring. I go to my parents' room. I meet up with Derek. Now it's time. Now it's nitty gritty. Now oh, we're in yeah. suits. Oh, we're bumping yeah. into everybody. I meet up with Bobby. Bobby's running the whole show. Officiating. He's officiating. We bump into Ari. Ari walks out of his room. We go, hey, can we hang in your room? So now we're in Ari's room. Right. We're all in our suits. It's me and Bobby and, and Derek and Bobby's wife. And, and then Mike Whitman walks by. I go, hey, Mike, hey. He walks by. And we're just hanging. I'm like, this is insane. I'm in Ari Shafir's room. Bobby Kelly's here. Derek's here. We're all in our suits. It's my wedding. Netty pot. So now we go back out. And I go, we got to get out there. We're, we're the groom. They're all waiting for us. And Bobby and Derek are going, Nah, dude, it's hot out there. We want to be in the air conditioning. They'll come find us. And I'm like, well, how are they going to find us? We're just hiding in a utility closet. Right. We're right. like on the other side of the thing. Yeah. And he's like, there's nobody even out there. And I'm like, there's no one out there because we're not out there. Right. He's like, dude, you're doing that thing. And then Derek's like, he's right. He's right. You're too nervous. Oh, uh, boy. And I'm going, all right. I'm trying to believe him. I go, okay, okay. And how about this, Bobby? Tuck your shirt in. How about that? And then after... The wedding, after it's all said and done, I go back to my room, I look at my phone, 75 missed phone calls uh, from my mother, from fucking uh, my uncle, the uh, guy running the show. They were looking for us. Of course. They thought I left. Yeah, they, they thought you got cold feet and scammed. They thought I had very cold feet. Yes, jizz <laughs> on my foot. I love that. Yeah, I know. But anyway, so the whole wedding was delayed because they thought I was good. They were all looking for me scurrying. All Bobby and Derek's fault, these fucking jerks. But eventually we find it, we figure it out, we go out there, it fills in, and now 
it fills in with a bunch of people I I forgot were coming. You weren't thinking about. Mm. You're like, there's Gary Gullman. There's yes. Ira Proctor. Nick Griffin. There's Nick Griffin. There's yes. Apollo. This yes. is life. It's yes. unbelievable. What a lineup. Unbelievable. I'm up there. I'm looking. It's like looking at a packed crowd. But everybody I've ever loved my whole life. How about that? That's something special. It's insane. Then her sister comes down. She's radiating. And now <laughs> here comes Sarah with her dad. And they're crying. And it's uh-huh. the dad. And you start thinking about she was a little girl. Yes. He held her in his arms. Yes. It's a whole thing. They cut a cord. A cord was cut. She and was then, an alcoholic. And she's from Africa. Wow. She was eight months old. They flew from South Africa to find a better life. Wow. She's a slave. This woman was a little baby. Yes. On an airplane. Plane, wow. moving to a different country. They said, we got to go find a better life. Now she's walking to the aisle to me. He's handing her to me. They found the life. I'm crying. He's gay. Dustin's back there sobbing. He, I see him crying. I really? Cry. I look at Ira. He does the uh, the V finger pussy lip oh, sign. Oh, that's what you want. Which is hilarious. I'm yeah. fucking dying laughing at that. And uh, it's quite a moment. You pass it off. And then Bobby was great. He was hilarious. What do you think of Bobby. I thought it was good. Uh, All you know, right. He got a joke in. Couple but, jokes. Uh, yeah, you know, he got through it. Well, he did a thing. <laughs> you know, you didn't care for it. <laughs> I thought it was fine. I mean, what, what, what's he supposed to do? You can't steal the show, really. So I thought he played it right on the line. There was a few fun jokes because everyone stands to the bride. And I go, Bobby, I think you have to tell him to sit. And he goes, I'm going to tell him to sit. That got a laugh. That's funny. And then he said, uh, you know, love is the little things. It's about being together and watching Netflix shows like Robert Kelly's Live at the Village Underground. That I got, got a big laugh. Big pop there. And then he said he was going to do this. He's like, I'm going to say we're gathered here with friends and family and Luis Gomez. And he goes, I want to see if he'll yell out Luis J. Gomez. So Bobby does the joke, and then Luis yells, Luis J. Gomez. I got thought, a laugh. I thought that was annoying, but I also liked it at the same time. Like, it was, it was, it was very, uh, it was them. I was worried that uh, her dad would be upset, but he wasn't. He loved it. He thought yeah. it was great. Then I got a big laugh accidentally because he was like, are you ready to give your vows? And I said, yes, I'm ready. Yeah. And that got a big laugh. I wasn't even trying to be funny. I didn't get why that got a laugh. It got a huge laugh. But it did like, get a laugh. I guess. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. And then, you know, he was really sweet. Bobby, I will say that he put a lot of time and effort. He showed up with a, a, a folder with yes. a bunch of stuff he wrote out. And he was really sweet. Oh, he had another joke. He said, I'm here because uh, Colin Quinn and Louis C.K. were unavailable. That was great. That, that was my a, favorite joke. That got a big laugh. And then he said, seriously, which is, that part hurt me because I'm like, no, no, you were the only choice ever. Ah. Um, but uh, Bobby was unbelievable. And, and his parents, her parents were thrilled. My parents were thrilled. It was really sweet. He pronounces us man and wife. And then we had the billy boo boo dee boo dee boo boo Yep. And now I'm like. All right, let's fucking hang. Yeah. We had a nice cocktail hour, plenty of hors d'oeuvres. Woo-wee. You go see everybody. We move into the big room. We're at the sweetheart table. You're at the table. Now, tell me your experience. Well, I mean, it was the cocktail hour was great. That's when you really get to mesh. I'm, I'm talking with Nate. I got Ari here. I got Sam over here. And we're, we're now we're starting to drink, so everybody's getting loose. And uh, then I'm like, when are we eating? When are we eating? Then they, they slide those two big-ass doors open. Boom! Beautiful ballroom with a dance floor and tabletop. Everything's set up. Nice place settings. And uh, we sit down. The food was great. And that DJ kicks it off. We start dancing. And now it's a party. It was great. And we, we had a, I had a great table with Sam and Phil and Ruby. And uh, we're chatting it up. We're having some big laughs. And uh, we're making fun of the other tables. We had like a little feud going. And we had a great time. We'd go in and dance. We'd come back. My only, my only uh, note was uh, there was too much dancing, then eating, then dancing, then eating. Like, let me dance or eat. But I, I got to tell you, that was different than most weddings. Most people loved it. People were thrilled about that. Oh, I was I was too much. It was like church. Like, right, you can sit, now kneel, now stand, now sit, now stand, now sit. So I felt like, well, what am I eating or sitting? Well, that's what I liked about it was because usually you're just sitting for an hour. Here's the salad. Here's the speech. Ah. Here's the thing. You're like, when can we get loose? Right. But ours was like, Everyone go crazy. All right, settle down. We're going to eat a little bit. We're going to dance more. Yeah. Like, All right, we're going to eat again. I, so I, I liked it. I got to switch. You know, I'm, 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 I'm whole hog. I'm doing a, a butt spin on the floor. I'm picking out on salmon. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was a lot. It was like a, I'd work off my meal, then I'd go back and eat more, then I'd work it off, and I'd go back and eat more. Well, it was, uh, we did things a little differently, and then those speeches, forget about it. I mean, oh, Sarah's dad gave a speech. He talked about how wonderful I am and my family, and then... 
how Sarah was, and then everyone was crying. Not a dry eye in the house. No, no, a lot of choking up, a lot of, hey, hey, Joe, uh, we've known each other. Uh, 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 we fucked in the woods on a dam. It, it was, was condemned. It was pretty beautiful and uh, great speeches by everybody. Sarah's sister and Derek was great, and then Sarah's dad. It was a lot of emotion. And then our first dance, we went alternative. We went with You're the One That I Want, Greece. Uh -huh. And we wanted everybody out there. And that was the moment where I could not stop crying. Really? Well, we came out there, and you imagine it. It's a wonderful song. And then everybody came out. Yeah. Nick Griffin's on the dance yeah. floor. Ira went fucking bananas. Oh, My yeah. dad's out there. And you're just looking around, and Sarah was flinging her hair, and she's never been happier. I'm looking at her. I'm looking at everybody. Beautiful. And you're like, this is all for us. And then that song went straight into the fucking uh, Bruno Mars, Don't Believe Me Just Why. And that oh, song is yeah. like rocking. Greg Stone's going ape shit. Uh -huh. I mean, people, Ryan Hamilton was out there fucking doing crazy shit. Cutting a rug. And uh, it's just fun to watch people dancing and people that wouldn't normally dance yes. dance. And then my uncle is sick, and he's been battling a little bit of cancer, and he's like, he's just out there. Jumping up and he's not even dancing, just jumping up and down, celebrating life. Wow. And you see all these people, they all mean so much to you, and everyone is just, it's a full on celebration of you and of love and of life. There is a special, when you right, we're getting that dancing and you just kind of let go for a second. Yes. And you see everyone else dancing, you feel the music, and you got a couple drinks in you. That's really a special moment. Well, it was fun. The DJ came over and he goes, I got to tell you, he's like, I've ne this is abnormal. The wife, the bride and groom are never on the dance floor this much. Mm -hmm. We were out there 100% of the 100%. time. 100%. Dancing and just sweating, and uh, you're unbuttoning your shirt, and everyone's out there. And you just keep seeing people that have meant so much to you in your life, and they're all so happy. And then we have a family tradition of playing uh, with a little help of my friends by the Beatles, a big circle. And then everyone makes a circle, and it's like the end of Big Fish. You're looking around, and yeah. I see all these people. I'm singing with a little help of my friends. I look over, I see Gullman, who helped me get sober and helped my career. And Big Stavros has got a big fat smile. And yes. you see your parents. And yes. It was just uh, an overwhelming amount of uh, love and affection, and it's... It's one of those things where you're like, God, I want to hold on to this forever. It's like this, all this love. And it, afterwards, we were talking, it, it makes all these like Twitter trolls and it, you're like, yeah. oh, you're fucking so meaningless. Yeah, you're losers. You're like, you have no idea how much love there was and how much talent there is there. Yes. And, and all these crossroads and these, this blood brothers and blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, it's a beautiful thing. All in one place and having the time of our lives. Overwhelming. And then the after party was great. We hung out and we fucking were throwing the, the cornhole again. We went mm -hmm. to the bar and it was just amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable. And then yesterday I came home and was sobbing every 15 minutes. I had to call Alan. Really? And he's like, this is great. I think it's great. I'm proud. He started crying. I oh, said, thank you man. and all this shit. And I called Bobby and everybody and my mother and it was just unbelievable and, uh, Hard to leave. Hard to say goodbye to Derek and uh, and Erica and his kids. And it was just uh, unbelievable. It was every single decision we made was perfect. The yeah. DJ was great. The yep. venue was great. The food was great. Going up Wednesday was great. The courthouse thing was great. It was just perfect. And uh, yeah, it was great. Great wedding. I've been to a lot of weddings, and that was the best. And the after party was great. It was just a a couple close knit group. We had the cigars, we had the beers, and the cornhole. And remember, we got kicked into the hotel. Yes, that was fun. The guy came out hot. He said, "We're gonna call the cops." And he went, "You know what? Never mind." It was like Scatman Crothers. He's like, "Yes, you know what you do, you go back inside." Yeah. And then we sat inside in the room where our wedding had been. Right. But now the lights up, and now it's like nine of us. It was really special, Greg. Stone and Nate and Canner. And I love my family so much, but it's, it is nice when it reaches the point where they all kind of go to bed because you don't have to worry about them anymore. Now right. it's just comics. Everyone right. knows each other now and everyone, you know, and uh, it was just beautiful. It was, it got down to like Henry and, and uh, McCray and you and me and uh, Stavros. Oh, and yeah. Canner and Uncle Dale, but he's one of us. And uh, it was just. Uh, it was beyond anything. And then Sarah and I went back up at like 2 in the morning. We went back to the room. We just talked for like an hour and a half. Everyone's Is that like, right? oh, they're going to fuck and the thing. Wow. We chatted about everything for like two oh, hours. We went to bed at 4.30 in the morning. I mean, eventually we made love. but uh, Yeah. But uh, we just chatted for hours. And then the next day we opened all the cards and everyone writes nice thing. We had that big frame picture. People write shit. Yes. Very sweet. And uh, had breakfast with my parents. And then, of course, you go have breakfast. You bump into Chris Walsh and yeah, Henry and all yeah. these guys. Everyone's coming through, disheveled. And we saw Ari and... 
And then uh, Greg drove us home, Greg Stone, and uh, it was beautiful. Perfect. And now, uh, Everything was perfect. Life sucks again. Yeah, well, you got to get married again. Just kidding. Yeah, we'll get divorced and uh, married again. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. It was great. It oh. was the best time of my life. Should we talk about the pizza debacle? Tell them about the pizza debacle. I'll make it quick. Uh, so after the party, we moved. The, the beer was empty and everything. So we, we the uh, the bar closed in the wedding room. So we had to go to the hotel bar because we wanted to keep drinking. So we're hanging out in the hotel bar. We're telling stories. We're being gay. And these two Italian mook teenagers, one of the earrings and a neck tattoo, and they go, "Hey, are you Williams? Somebody ordered about a hundred pizzas, or you know, twenty pizzas." And I was like, "Oh, that pizza looks pretty good." And I'm yeah. half in the bag. So me and Derek start scheming, and yep. Derek's like, I want a fucking piece of pizza. And he's like, look, no one's ordering the pizza. And one guy's like, it's probably the other wedding. And Derek goes up to the front desk. He goes, what's up with the other wedding? They're like, oh, they're all passed out. They're done. And he was like, well, they're done. So let's get these pizzas. So I go, well, my middle name is Williams. Huh. And uh, so I go up to the guy, and I go, maybe they're for me. Maybe it was a gift. I'm the one who got married. And he goes, are you Williams? And I go, sure. And I show my ID, and it says Mark Norman Williams. Because uh-huh. they spell it weird on the ID. Yes. And uh, so he's like, oh, all right, well, here you go. And I, we gave him a 20, and we started eating the pizzas. Yes, we did. And then about 20 minutes later, these young hot kids start showing up from the bars. All black. All black, dressed up. Suits, dressed in all ties, black. Yeah, white nice people. dresses, white people. And one, a couple Asians. And uh, they were eating the pizza, and it was their pizza. And they show up, and I remember this cunty Asian chick goes, so you're just going to eat the pizza? And I had a pizza in my hand. I'm like, well, apparently. Like, yes, you're seeing me eat it. Yes. So, yes, I am going to just eat the pizza. And she's like, you don't even know who it is? I'm like, well, it's been here an hour. Nobody claimed it. So we uh, we tipped and blah, blah, blah. So luckily there wasn't any uh, fisticuffs, but there was tension. Yeah, there was a lot of tension. It was a little weird. We ended up just moving our whole party outside. Which was better, because then we could smoke and play cornhole and yuck it up. Yeah. We got no late night meal, but we were fine. Anyways. No, it was fine, fine. We and, all picked uh, out. Yeah, that was, it was weird. It got tense, because if it was reversed, I feel like our crew would have fist fought oh, the other Oh, yeah. Two. You can't fuck with my food. Yeah, it would have been a bad scene, but it ended up being fun and funny and uh, late night hang. It was special. The whole thing was amazing, and now, and then, like I said, time just keeps moving. Now, here we are the next day. I'm recording a podcast. I got spots tonight. Yeah. We go to Tempe, the whole thing. Well, we just got back from Tempe if you're listening to this now. Uh-huh. Well, but yeah, life goes on, fatty. Keeps moving. Yeah. You can't stop it. You just got to put new fun things in your future, and then when you do that one, do another one, and then another one. Yeah, stay in the moment, all that stuff, but uh, it was just beautiful, and I, I felt really good because everyone's always like, just remember to breathe and talk to people and eat because it all flies by. I think a lot of that, most people are drinking at their wedding. It helps to be sober, because I was in it the yeah, whole time. Yeah, good point. And really spent time with everybody, and it was uh, it was magical. It was everything I dreamed it would be, and everything she dreamed it would be. We were so happy. Everyone was happy. Her parents, my parents, both of us. And I, I want to say, I know you, you uh, our table danced every now and then, but we, our table was having so much fun. You put us th- such a good group yeah. that we were having great discussions and talking about bits and whatever the hell. So I want to say the other table, you had Greg Stone in it, but they were all just smoking weed. Yes. So it looked like they were up and at them, but most of them were in the back yes. of smoking. But, boy, we had, uh, we had a great time. Unbelievable. Well, great time. Best great time. night of my life, best week of my life. Yeah. And what I'm, can I'm you say? Happy I got to be there and be a part of it and uh, be in your movie for a night. Yes, it was a hell of a picture. Great flick. That's a hell of a picture. <laughs> all right, we got to wrap it up. Yeah, woof. All right, a little, little, little choked up here. Love, love your, love thy neighbor. Go tell everyone you love her. It felt, that's what it felt like. It felt like, I can't believe there's this much love in my life. It's oh, unbelievable. Yeah. You see it in the people's faces, you're like, God, they, they love us. They really love us. Yeah, you have a good group. You can tell how good a person is by who he surrounds himself with, and you had a good, good eggs there. Well, my uncle came up and he's like, I've never seen anyone with so many friends. You have so many friends. He's like, it's unbelievable. And yeah. Like, I really do. And there's a bunch of close friends that, Weren't even there because we had couldn't afford it. Yeah, right. Bunch of people that I love dearly that weren't there. So now, what do we get? A year on the gift here? How long is it? Uh... I think you get a year. Yeah, take your time. All right. Big numbers are tough. Uh, Just calcula. Uh, all right. Well, comedy is happening still. We're uh, comedians. September twenty second, Huntington, New York. The guy just uh, emailed me. Let me see where that fucking gig is. Uh, Long Island. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, uh, fuck, I don't remember. Mm. I'll, I'll put the page up or tweet at me if you're in Long Island. Huntington, New York, Friday, September 22nd. Email me or tweet me. I'll get the details up there. You'll see them coming up. 
And uh, I don't know, comedianjoelist.com. Join the Patreon. That's the main thing. We got a ton of bonus shit. We just did a bunch of queefs, and uh, we're really living life. So uh, hit up the Patreon. I don't know. I'm a wreck here. All right. You're doing great, and you got a great wife and a great life. Yes, sir. Check out marknormancomedy.com for dates. I'm coming to Royal Oak, Toronto, San Francisco, Sacramento, Providence, Edmonton. I'll be all over this goddamn globe. And uh, check out the Facebook page. Tweet at Chipotle. We love the cards. Come see us live. Buy a shirt. Hit the Patreon. Listen to Laughable. Send Joe a nice uh, congratulate you. And then uh, love thy anal. And, uh, you know, hug your mom and blow your dad. Yeah. Take it easy. This has been a Stand Up Labs production, powered by digital media. Subscribe to new and archive episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. And find all of our shows at StandUpLabs.nyc. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Aha!